Fiona was a really, really happy, bubbly little girl. She had the whole world at her feet. She loved sport. She loved her animals. She loved her, she had cats and dogs and she loved riding her bike with her friends. The day Fiona was diagnosed, uh, the doctor came into the hospital at seven o'clock at night and asked me to join him in the nurse's station. He said, it's cancer. And I said to him, I cannot go out of this room and go and tell Greg. You will need to tell Greg and Fiona. And he walked in and he said to Fiona, we have the results of your test. And he said, you have cancer. And she immediately turned to me and she said, Mum, am I going to die? I remember it like yesterday. Fiona was 12 and a half when she was diagnosed. And like the flick of a switch, our whole life was turned upside down. And we were fortunate because Dr. George Canarakis was there and he was prepared to treat Fiona. So he became her doctor. Every day we struggled. And I still do. We struggled terribly. And it was really, really hard. And the scars never heal for some. When she saw the benefits of the chemotherapy, she realized that the treatments had to come from somewhere. So that's where she found out about research. So she wanted to see where it was done and what it looked like in the laboratory. She looked at a cancer cell under a microscope and it was like somebody flicked a switch. So we came back to Ballarat and we formed a group to fundraise for cancer research for Ewing sarcoma, which is what Fiona had. She started experiencing really bad pain in her hip again. So George ran tests and it was identified that the cancer had spread and there was nothing more that they could do for Fiona. So George, well, George was a godsend. He took the time every day that night to visit Fiona on the way home. When she passed, I laid on her bed with her for half an hour, holding her in my arms. And I looked at her and I promised her. I made a promise that I would never give up and that one day the whole world would know what she wanted to see happen. And today they do, because the Institute is internationally recognised. We had a meeting because the fundraising was supporting Melbourne. And George and I had a talk in a car park. And I said to George, remember the promise that you made to Fiona. George closed the door on his life down there. Um, he had, that was his work, his, his income, his support for his family. And he, threw all that into the wind to keep a promise to Faye. Fiona loved him, she adored him. And I think that, you know, George knew what she wanted. So a meeting was held with St John's and the nuns were very supportive to our family and they gave him the paint shed. And we had one part-time scientist, Simon Fenton, and George, who donated his time amongst his busy practice and everything else. We travelled everywhere. We would travel miles and stand in front of a group sometimes of eight people who would give us $50. And there were schools and community groups and service clubs and 
there was just dancing groups and like ladies in their 70s who had their little fundraising group and they would have strawberry days and it was just so overwhelming and in saying that I God bless all my community every day of my life for helping Fiona's dream come to fruition. Well, it was an interesting time after I uh, promised um, uh, Fiona that I would set up a, a laboratory um, in, uh, yeah, that was before she passed away in October 1991. Um, it, it took until 1994 when I actually met Gail, her mother, and Professor David James at a, at a function, and Gail brought up the question of my promise to Fiona in front of David. I went to have a business meeting with the nuns of St John's, and they, they took me to the chapel, and, and we had a, they had a prayer for setting up the lab, and that was the end of the business meeting because they said, well, we prayed for you to get the laboratory going and we'll give you a little, a little spot in the paint shed, a disused paint shed, and that was it. <laughs> that was the beginning of the, uh, the first lab. My colleague said when I was moving to Ballarat, if, if I moved to Ballarat, I would never do research again. And I'm happy to discount that quote now and say that we've been very successful at setting up research in Ballarat at an international level. So the research that's undertaken at the Institute is in a number of different areas, but it has the same, the same theme. The theme is, what is the role of the immune system in those cancers or cancer types? So we are studying ovarian cancer, we're studying lung cancer, we're studying bowel cancer, we're studying a lot of uh, leukemias and a lot of uh, blood disorders. The main thing that we have to understand is that it's not, uh, they're all related in the sense that we are looking at what is the role of the immune system to allow those cancers to develop and how can we block that? How can we allow the um, immune system to attack the cancer cells? And really that's the focus of all our work. We have a unique situation here in Ballarat where we can make a big difference to how patients are treated, not just publish papers in research publications, but go one step further and actually produce some of that uh, knowledge to then lead to better treatments for cancer patients. And I, th I think we're in a very good position here in Ballarat to be a leader in that area. We're the only serious cancer research institute that has an international reputation out of a major city area in terms of cancer research. From the vision of a young teenage girl that wished to have this institute here in Ballarat, to us developing programs here that are internationally recognised, and the third thing that she wanted, which, which we hope we can um, oblige her with, is that we're going to make a major discovery in the area of cancer research. It will make a difference for lots of patients. So I hope that we can honour that for Fiona. So we're in a, an exciting phase of our research at the moment. The, the future is very bright. We can only achieve that with the support of individuals in this room and in the community to achieve us, to achieve the goal that we are trying to achieve, which is how can we attack cancer in a much better way using your own immune system? And I think it's only through support, through events like tonight and your uh, ability to support the research that we'll be able to advance that to the next stage. Thank you. 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 Thank you.